I found this fairly beefy power supply module on its way to the scrap at work, so I decided to grab it and uh, see what makes it tick. Because it is a fairly substantial device here, actually. Um, it puts out 21 amps of five, plus 5 volts and 4 amps of minus 25 or 25 uh, volts. Um, its input range is anywhere from 21 to 56 volts. Um, so it's a fairly beefy unit and what really attracted my attention to it was this monster heat sink. I'm just curious to see what's going on underneath there. So I figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride. To start with, we'll just take a peek at the front here. Um, so this is uh, from Harris Farinon uh, Corporation, which is, uh, this is actually out of the digital control shelf of, uh, uh, digital shelf and multiplex shelf of a microwave radio system. Um, you can see the model number there. If you, if you search for it, you can find a few of them on, on eBay from resellers for few hundred bucks um and for the com sort of company that would use microwave radio system this that's i guess a reasonable price um got some test points here for the five plus and five and minus five volts and ground of course uh disable which basically just these things normally are deployed in pairs so you if you're measuring this one you push the disable button on its partner so that this one's taking the full load and vice versa a uh, couple of alarm connections up on top on the edge connector on the back some fairly beefy connections suitable for high current into the edge connector um, got a fuse position with the fuse pulled out of it some good size inductors a couple of 470 microfarad caps on the side four trim pots i'm assuming but i don't know for sure because i don't have a schematic um, this is one of those no user serviceable parts devices, right? Uh, I'm assuming these four pots are for adjusting alarm thresholds and possibly the actual voltage, though I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's, and then of course we have, like I said, it's most intriguing feature, the massive heatsink. So I'm going to undo lots of screws in there undo those quickly and then we'll pop it off. Okay, there's all the screws off the heat sink. And there were really a lot of them. Wow, more heat sink. And there is some compound on here, although it's pretty badly dried up. Where did that screw go? I'm just going to set this thing aside for now. Put that screw back in there so I can find it later. So, what have we here? Um, well, there's obviously some power devices there. We'll get into those in a while. This is interesting. These toroidal transformers, um, they're core is was attached to the heat sink now, i don't know if that's just for mechanical mounting or if they actually intended for them to get a little bit warm there's a lot of inductors on here which makes sense because essentially at the end of the day it's a buck converter right it's taking 20 to 40 volts dc and stepping it down and creating two different polarities out of it. Um, so from, this is obviously the input because that's the, that's the fuse. So there's capacitors and inductors and smoothing capacitors there just to clean up the incoming. Um, we've got a relay there, a couple of fairly beefy resistors. Um, got some little decoupling caps down here which, on what is, I assume, the outputs, but we'll have to look at that a little bit more carefully. Wow. Uh, so some couple of uh, two pin dip devices. 
there. Some three pin dip devices, or well, one, two pin, three, three pin dip devices. No, it's two pin dip. Generally, I would assume those are going to be optocouplers. I'll have to uh, go and look up some of these part numbers, I guess. Um, fairly solid. Oh, we got a couple more adjustments over here. Okay, so I'm going to revise my uh, my earlier guess. I'm going to guess that these four are over voltage and under voltage thresholds for alarms. Um, or possibly over current alarms. Um, I'm wondering if they have anything to do with this LM339, which if I remember correctly, 339 is a quad comparator. They might. Um, if so, that would make sense being an alarm threshold setting. Huh, another slightly different six pin dip device. Interesting. Um, okay, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper here. I'm going to undo these screws, which will take the back plate off and let us get at the solder side of the board. And there we go piece of insulating cardboard or paper or something there. Let's see what's back here. Oh, well, it looks like it's been repaired at one or more points in its history. There's what looks like some rework. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, those definitely look like rework. What is that? Looks like it's somewhere in the vicinity of these resistors here. Hmm. What else looks like rework? Uh, this I see down here, which is this one. I'll have to look up that part number if I can, just to see what he is. Um, what's his neighbor here? LM358. That's an op amp, isn't it? Hmm. Seeing a few of the same chips over and over again, repeated again. Uh, this one, which is called itself a Vicor. CS505B. Never heard of such a thing. I'm going to have to do a bunch of looking up here, I guess. Um, I want to take a look at what's underneath these heatsink blocks. I'm, I wonder if it's going to be linear regulators just to smooth things out. Or if it's just going to be big honking transistors. Well, that's interesting. Haven't seen that before. The washers are actually soldered in. Huh. I'm just going to grab a few of these off at random. I haven't really looked at the other side to see what part of the what part of the circuit they're in. So that's this guy. Oh wow. That's really stuck on there. I don't want to destroy it. I'm very confident that this... Ah, wow. There's threads in that? No, that's not screwed onto anything anymore. That's just... Oops, adhered on. Well, how about these guys? Are they going to come off? No, wow. Oh. Maybe I can get under them enough to see what's going on and just see what they are. Um, uh, international rectifier H5C5. Hmm. 
I think. So I took a little bit closer look at that uh, with my magnifying glass, and it turns out it was actually a 30 CPQ 100 from International Rectifier, which, as you can see, is a 30 amp shot key rectifier. Um, there we go there. So it's uh, two, basically two diodes in one package with a common cathode. And... Wow, okay. I guess that makes sense. Since the, uh, the device is rated at like 20 amps output on on the one uh, power one voltage okay well it's a uh, reliable operation up to 175 degrees celsius wow and then you include the massive heat sinks that this thing has that's pretty bulletproof okay so that's what these two big guys are and Probably these three as well. Know, let's take a look and find out which one. Of them, that one I should be able to fold up easiest. No, these three are something different. That's actually a pretty good view at it. Let's see if we can figure out what that guy is. Okay, so they are a different brand, but they are also dual shot key diodes in a common package here uh, with the common cathode in the middle. These guys are also rated at, uh, where's the current? Looks like 30 amps and 45 volts. Um, that explains the part number 3045, 30 amps, 45 volts. Doi. That makes perfect sense. And temperature rating up to continuous reverse voltage at 136 degrees Celsius. Uh, repetitive. Okay, output current uh, rating is at 130 degrees Celsius or lower. So again, given that massive heat sink, it's never going to hit that temperature um, in in an air-conditioned room, which is the kind of place that this thing would be installed in. Okay, so that's some more of the high-powered stuff that I can get. I just, I cannot get under this guy f enough to see exactly what he is. But I'm going to guess it's something similar to those other ones, or possibly a power transistor. Um, this one up here... I looked at earlier uh, D44H11. I just looked at that off camera. It's a 10 amp NPN transistor, um, which is another one there, another one back here. Um, what else did I see on here? Uh, there's a relay, which I assume is the, an alarm output relay. These things, telecom equipment, their alarm outputs tends to be just closed contacts, dry contacts, no power on them. That way there's safe isolation between equipment. Um, so that's probably what that one is. Um, let's see now. Uh, there's a bunch of these six pin chips, uh, which I guess were optical isolators. Let's just take a quick peek and see if we can find data sheets for those guys. Um, they are, let me just zoom in properly here, CNY17F-3. That was an easy find. Opto coupler phototransistor output, no base connection. Yeah, pretty much what I thought. So those will be uh, just isolating um, the measured side on the low voltage or load side of the of the uh, switching power supply and providing some feed, some isolated feedback to the primary side or the high voltage side. Nothing unexpected there. It's again pretty much every switch mode power supply uh, that you see in modern times has the same setup in there. 
and we're seeing those little four pin dip package MOSFETs. There's one there, there's one up here, there's another one down there, another one there. Okay, a bit of searching, but uh, I found this which matches what I'm seeing on the board. It looked like an international rectifier part number and logo on there, but maybe this is a third party or something. I couldn't find it under international rectifier. Anyway, it is a power MOSFET. Uh, can take 100 volts across it, across the uh, drain and source, without blowing up. Uh, where is the current? Okay, drain current. Near continuous drain current, one amp maximum at uh, 25 Celsius or uh, 700 milliamps, three quarters of an amp at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's not, I guess for a uh, for a dip package, it's high power, but here it's going to be probably driving something bigger. Uh, so it's got most of those identified what haven't I identified yet I guess oh there's these two chips here Victor C5505B I knew this had to happen eventually I could not find anything on that chip even when I spelled the name right and used the right part number um, which is Vicor uh, Uh, Vicor CS505B is what those chips really are. But I did find a Vicor company who makes power supply bits and pieces and modules and related things. So I'm guessing this little 8-pin uh, dip chip is actually the switch mode power supply controller chip which would make a certain amount of sense because you need something like that to uh, to run the operation. So if that guess of mine was correct, then there is the brains of the plus and minus five volt power supplies. Um, for an opto isolator following each one, these little MOSFETs for each one, a toroidal transformer for each one, these big honking rectifiers uh, more rectifier modules over there we've got inductors on both sides we've got capacitors and a 16 volt thousand microfarad smoothing capacitor for each one so i'm going to say that the two power supplies divide pretty much along there and this is all common uh, monitoring and management and whatnot. Um, and I think that's most of the chips that are on here. The rest of it is um, capacitors, some big honking resistors, which are probably load resistors. Is that uh, 6R2? Wow. Uh, probably 5 to 10 watts I'm um, yeah maybe 10 watts of resistor there which is probably just providing a little bit of a load when there's no other load going on um, tons of decoupling capacitors just to keep everything nice and smooth and stable and keep the high frequencies on the power supply rails down to a minimum yeah it's it's a solid, high reliability, high current power supply. And I guess I should give you a little bit of overview that I should have done at the beginning, probably. This, as I mentioned, is out of a microwave radio uh, multiplexer. The multiplexer takes uh, various DS1 or T1 circuits, which are 1.544 megabits per second, um, circuits which are the basis of uh, telephony ever since digital telephone systems came into existence um, you can do the math uh, later on but in the short term here uh, or in, in short 
um, one T1 or DS1, depending on how you're referring to them, can handle 24 telephone calls or 24 56 K modem connections, right? Um, this particular microwave radio is a DS3 microwave. So it can handle 28 T1s. So you can do the math, 28 T1s times 24 telephone calls. That's what this old microwave radio could handle. Um, or um, a T1 is uh, 1.544 megabits per second. Multiply that by 28 and you'll get the data capacity of the radio. Um, it's about 45-ish megabits per second. Um, this was not made, this was made for Harris, but it wasn't made by them. It was made by the Reliance Electric Company of Lorain, Ohio, which still exists, although they call themselves Cincinnati now. Um, Lorain just being, you know, uh, it was under their Lorain brand of megahertz power and, of, and there's some patent numbers here. Um, the newest patent number on here is from 1985, which would match with this, the vintage of this unit. I would put it to uh, late eighties, early nineties when it was put into service. Um, the, uh, what else do we have to say about it? Um, Lorraine power still exists, but it's now owned by Emerson who does an awful lot of telecom power. Um, so that's mostly what that, or what I know about that. Um, yeah, nice, big, beefy power supply. I don't know if this one works or not, uh, or if it was a spare when the thing was decommissioned. Regardless, I, I suppose I could reverse engineer it and try and feed it, uh, 30-ish volts and see what I can get out of it. But... Technically, this still belongs to my company, even though they were throwing it out. So I'm going to put it all back together and take it back and throw it back into the scrap bin. Um, there's not that much that I, that I'd really want to salvage on here anyway, except for the big beefy heat sink. Cause you never know when you're going to actually, you know, the heat sink weighs more than the rest of it. And that's aluminum. You never know when you're going to want a big heat sink like that. Though, in good conscience, I can't really take it because it technically doesn't belong to me. Okay, that's it. I've satisfied my curiosity as to what's going on inside this tank. Um, hope you found it interesting. Uh, I will talk to you again.